and you are listening to the Movie Raid Show. It's time for the Movie Raid, and tonight's victim is actor Bishop Stevens that has done several films such as Girl on the Third Floor. Hello. Hey, brother. How you doing? What's going on with you today? Ah, oh, just chilling, enjoying my day off, beautiful days off. Mm. Must be nice. <laughs> it's always nice, but it seems like you never get a day off. Man, I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? I'm too, if, I, if, if I got days off, I'm not working. If I'm not working, I ain't making no money. You know how that goes, Mike. And they make no money, man. You gotta make no money, but you, you can still sell. You know, do the old ways. I mean, if rappers can sell CDs in the back of your car, you can you can sell the same thing with bootlegged movies of your own movie, right? <laughs> Boot, bootleg my own movie, okay. <laughs> I'll just stick my. I'll just get. <laughs> Dude, I could just go get a, a magic marker and I'll put my name under the credits. It's okay. You you can you don't, you don't have to take the entire blame for everything. You know what? I might have to do that. I might have to start getting a whole bunch of girl on the third floor DVDs and just sell them on my trunk. <laughs> I would. Hey, hey, I'm just talk- I'm just talking crap. Hold on, now. I'm just joking. I don't want to get a phone call tomorrow. <laughs> That's okay. We'll sell them at Walmart. <laughs> well, something like a Red Target, a Target or Walmart or something like that. That'd be fine. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so t- it's good to be on the show. Thanks for having. me. Always, man. So tell us uh, a little bit about Girl on the Third Floor. This has been on Netflix for a while now. Uh, it's already been getting some good buzz. So tell us a little bit or allowed uh, what you're talking about of this film, what your involvement with this one. Well, Girl on the Third Floor, like you said, it's been on Netflix for a minute. Um, it's still going strong. It, it started as one of the top ten. The first week that Netflix did the top ten, we were like number three. And then we went to number eight, back up to number four, and it, w- it was in the top ten on Netflix for the first month that they did that. So that, that was like one of the coolest things. And I co-starred with uh, CM Punk, a uh, well-known wrestler, and it's about a guy who decides he wants to renovate an old haunted house. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow so <laughs> let's, just, let's just say he learned when you want to renovate a house hire somebody don't do it on your own oh man it sounds all it already sounds creepy from there i mean comes to concern does he know how to use a hammer <laughs> hey man I, I i tell you if you want you check out this movie I don't know. The hammer gets used in several wrong ways. I'm not, I don't know either right there. It's a lot of disgusting stuff that comes out the walls. It's a lot of crazy stuff that you put that has happened in this house back in, you know, back in, it used to be a house of ill repeat. So a lot of people died. A lot of things happened. Uh, so the spirits in this house, they're, uh, they're not exactly the nicest people, if you know what I mean. Oh wow, man! Is this going to be on DVD as well? Is it it's just currently uh, streaming on Netflix and uh, anything else? Or anything else is going to be on as well that we can check out as well? Um, yeah, it's, it's on Netflix. I believe it's on DVD as well. Um, Amazon. I, I believe at one point it was at Walmart, things like that. Um, I'm sure when it's done with Netflix, it will have a full blast DVD. But I think right now you can get it on Amazon. Don't call me on that, but I think so. Oh, very cool, man. Is there any other uh, films that we can check out right now as well that you also just recently released? I know you've had like Salem and have a half a dozen others within the last year or two. Oh, man, it's been a, I, I, I will say 2020 overall has been a sucky year for everybody. But as far as movie releases, I can actually say that I, you know, things are pretty good. We had, you know, right now you can go on Hulu. I got, uh, there's a movie called Payday that I'm in and I, that I star in, and it's on some of everything. Amazon, Hulu, it's on some of everything. Um, um, there's a movie I'm in, uh, I think we just a Girl on the Third Floor. I'm also in uh, My Days of Mercy with Ellen Page and Kate Mora. You can see that, I believe, on, uh, is that Hulu? There's so many streaming networks, it's hard to keep up with what's what right now. You know, but... Uh, the Girl on the Third Floor, uh, My Days of Mercy, Payday, and then we got a bunch that are about to come out. 
Oh, that's very cool, man. And, you know, ad- adaptivity when it comes to character is uh, usually an equal control. But in this case, do you think it kind of varies on strength of character in, in terms of trying to get that equal balance uh, when trying to perform that? Do you, do you think when it comes to ad- adapting to it? Well, I think you can have the smallest role, but you can have a very strong character that makes a lasting impression and makes the movie what it is. For instance, I'm in a movie that's been released, it's won, I mean, it's won, I don't know, 50 something awards, it's been it's been nominated a hundred and something times. Uh, you can certainly watch it on Tubi. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on Tubi as well. That, that Tubi's another one that's a lot on. And, oh, and My Days of Mercy is on Apple TV. I'm sorry, let me get that right. Um, but it's called uh, Thy Neighbor, and it's a faith-based thriller. I know that doesn't sound more right, but yes, faith-based movies are coming out now, and they're more thrillers. Like, uh, like you know, like the Thriller Lifetime type movies, where somebody actually gets killed. It's not about drug addiction, and it's really about, you know, some crazy guy stalking his family, and the family happens to be, you know, the family of a preacher, of, of a, you know, a new, a, new, a new pastor of a church. And the guy's like really nuts and, I mean, kidnapping, somebody dies, you know, somebody gets killed, you know, it, it, yeah, it, 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 it's a thriller, thriller. Um, but yeah, but my role in that movie, you really don't see me to the end of the movie because I basically play a convict who's turned kind of like an angel type guy. And I come and have the conversation with the pastor after everything happens to get him to come back to the church. So my character is only in the movie for a short amount of time, but everybody who sees it has said that it's one of the, that character is one of the strongest characters in the movie. It really sets the, sets the, the ending for the movie. So yeah, having strong characters is very important to a person's career, especially in, you know, in movies these days. Because so many people worry about these little small roles, Man, there's nothing wrong with a small role as long as the character is strong. I totally agree because when you're playing the small roles, like it's the character of of how the the the, the, the personality when the audience sees that personality, and if you're p- performing that, it doesn't matter whether you're you're a mailman or whatever. If you're a sadistic mailman and you're just in the background with all the other extras or whatever, the fact is they're going to look at you and then like, hey, that's that one guy that was that crazy mailman guy and they'll remember it and it's that adaptivity. Then that's the adaptivity when that kicks in, like when they recognize that and you're performing something else in a a small role or even minor than that, you're going to you're going to get that big recognition later on and then move on to other roles. and, And that's where it just kind of balls it up from there. I, I, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that really, like, I've been on a lot of t- television shows. I've been on a lot of mainstream television shows. I mean, I was on The Walking Dead with the governor's crew. Um, I was on the Woodbury Militia. I was on Chicago PD um, twice. Um, I actually have an audition uh, this week with Chicago Med. But here's a good example of what you're saying. I was The last time I was on Chicago PD, it was a small role. I was a bodyguard from Michael Beach, and, you know, he's from, you know, he plays Aquaman's, uh, not Aquaman's father, but he was an Aquaman, he played Black Manther's father, so he's a big, well-known actor, but I played his bodyguard, and no lines, but in the middle of this drug deal situation type situation, I slammed this guy's head in a ta- into a table, and... It's a whole thing about who's getting ready to pull out a gun while I'm while I'm holding this guy's head, and that the look and everything else that I did with that has really just shocked me up with the, with the people who do the Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, Chicago Med movies. Um, it shot me through the roof with a lot of other movies that I'm you know that I just signed on for. So yeah, you're right. It, it's people remember people remember that look <laughs> and all that stuff, and it really it really does shoot you through the roof. Oh, absolutely, man. And success can have many advantages as well, many, many advantages. But do you think that that advantage can actually eventually be a disadvantage uh, the further you do other projects or even roles at at some point in your career? Uh, I 
I'm going to actually say no. I mean, I, I think probably when you, I mean, if you get to the level like Dwayne Johnson or something where you're worth $10 million a movie and not everybody can pay that, maybe so, you know. But I think overall, see, like, a lot of people talk about being typecast. I don't mind being typecast. Being typecast keeps me working. I work all the time. And if that can open the door for me with somebody I've worked with before, so maybe I've worked in a typecast role before, and then there's another type of role that they like, well, he has the look that we want, but can he do that type of role? But because they already know what I can do and how good I am, they give me the shot. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So it opens up another door. It's always an opportunity, and that's where, like, every opportunity counts. And even if you are a stereotype, you keep being stereotyped until you move into to another genre or whatever. And even if you are a stereotype then, but, you know, that just means that you, <laughs> you're pretty good at being stereotype of this type of character. But it helps your career. It helps your resume. It helps you go into even bigger things or even start your own areas that you would like to uh, perform in, you know, to learn, to educate yourself, and to show that what you're actually – really capable of proving yourself to and that's that's the important thing is to show that here you're not just doing one small role after small role of the same type of character same type of personality you're you're showing something a little bit more different each time and it shows each time like you're a biker you're okay guess what now the next role is a vampire biker there you go you just changed it up you mix it up every time you can be the same thing but change it up nine million different ways Exactly. I mean, we just, you know, I did a movie called The Horrific Evil Monsters. It comes out next year with 388 Studios up in New York. And so the deal is everybody looks at me knows I play the tough, either bad guy, of course, or the tough good guy. You know, I'm wondering, it's always this tough, sharp edge, oh, he will kick your butt looking guy, you know, you know, type, type stuff. But it was funny because those guys, so the character that I play, is the lead character, is one of the lead characters, it's, it's, uh, and it's, I got to show my, com- my, my, uh, comedic side, my comedy side. I got to show that I can be comedy. I'm a funny motherfucker. <laughs> so I got to show people that I can, you know, I'm, I'm good at, you know, I'm good at comedy. And it has, um, it's gonna be, but, but yet he's still a big guy. So it shows another side of that, you know? Oh, without a doubt, and people are more focused on like what kind of genres or what kind of work they specifically do. But sometimes you kind of have to set that a, a little bit far back in your mind a little bit. You have to make the best of what you can from the character or whatever assignment that you're given. It doesn't matter what it is. You have to get it out there and not worry about like okay, okay, money is always an issue clearly, but at the same time you can't put like fame above you or like that kind of recognition above you. You have to show what you're, what you're made of every single day, whatever it is. Yes. Yes. You definitely want to do that. You definitely want to let people know, you know, Hey, look, you know, I'm made of sugar and spice, everything nice, but I also got a little bit of, you know, lemon juice up in here. <laughs> you know, so you just want to let people know that there's, a different, there's different sides of you. You want to let like I said, you get that door open, but the stereotypes, you get that door open, however you can, and then you let them see, hey, there's a lot more to me than meets the eye. You know, I'm, I'm more, it's not what they say, don't judge a book by its cover. This is truly that type of business. Don't judge the book by the cover. And especially like if you are into athleticism or or have always been that way all your life, but having to break into the film industry, having to perform more than just roles that require physique and strength and so forth, that tough guy look type of thing. But at the same time, you have to get past that, but still have that trait, still have that, that extra talent right there, but you still have to get past that so that way people can recognize you that you can be a character actor of whatever it is you be in, instead of just being... Uh, pinned to what you were, like you, like a, a gold medalist, uh, you know, weightlifter, and that's all you know, you're ever really, everyone has, is ever looking at you as. Yep, yep. I mean, you know, coming from you know, coming from a pro wrestling background, a lot of people, you know, a, a lot of actors nowadays are coming from a pro wrestler background. You know, you know, it wasn't it was long before the Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, long before John Cena, long before all that. You had Hulk Hogan who got in the movie, you had Randy Savage in the movie, you had Booker T, all those guys did charm the television show. A lot of people, you know, just forget, forget the fact that we play, as a pro wrestler, you play a different character almost every night you get in the ring. One minute you're, you know, you're this tough, smart, running your mouth guy, the next 
me. They're scared of the guy walking through the ropes at six foot nine, and, you know, six hundred pounds, and, and the next day you're so you always get a chance to play these different roles. So it's it's definitely a benefit to have that behind you. And and the other thing is we're not above learning from other actors. I mean. We just did a movie called Bloodthirst. Um, I just filmed a movie called Bloodthirst where I'm one of the leads and the other lead actors, you know, Tara Reed, Costas Mandalore, Robin Lasorto. And I gotta tell you, I learned so much from those three. I mean, especially Costas and, you know, Costas and Robert. I learned, I mean, I learned, oh my God. I just, you know, you know, this is one of those things that when you think you know it all, get out. Just get out. <laughs> well, absolutely, man. And when you when you've had a, when you had an, a previous experience, like there's different kinds of way performances of characterization, like like you mentioned, the, the, the in terms of pro wrestling and stuff like that. That's a different kind of theatrical way of 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 expression. But th- there's like there's different ways when you're entering something else. That's it's a whole new world, man. It's a whole new way of how you're portraying a, a character. You're not just doing like from one area to this area. Now you you're diving into some serious emotions. Right, right, exactly. A lot, a lot, a lot of people don't believe I can don't believe I can do that. Hey, dude, I can I can I can get scared. I I can cry on a dime if I need to. <laughs> just, just, just give me that. Just give me that little bit of time to think about myself. <laughs> well, absolutely, man, and uh, a lot of athlete, uh, athletes never get that kind of uh, opportunity because they always, like, again, they always cast them as this brute and do a wrestling move or whatever is, or a baseball, you know, or a basketball player, and then they do their signature move, and that's just a, a lazy, cheap way of, of putting them in there, unless they really want to be an actual um, actor further in their career. That that's great, but that that's a lot to learn from that point instead of being just performance in that particular way right that is so true that is so so true and you know and I think a lot of people a lot of people also don't understand that you also have to be able to do the, the hustle and that, that has to be part of your your makeup your your inner makeup a hustler you know a lot of people don't seem to understand that. And a lot of people just go, oh, well, I can, I can play this role. I can play that role. I think I, okay, but you still got to hustle to get those roles. So like, so that's also part of it. I'm, you know, I'm a hustler. You know, I'm, I'm, I try to, I mean, you know, you, you know, we're, we're Facebook friends. You know, I, I, I'm either working or I'm promoting. I'm either working or I'm hyping. I'm either working or I'm, you know, something. But, you know, in, you know, just even with, even with my social media, much less, you know, my real life. So. You gotta, you gotta stay on it. Some people are not like that. Yeah, it's understandable. You are what whatever is you perceive because presentation and impression is the biggest keys, in my opinion, in this matter. Because what you what you are trying to give off from yourself to the world is what's going to be reflected uh, back onto you. And and when you do that, that that's where you know either opportunity can be really good or really slim, depending on how you want it to be. Because it's all up to you. Yep, yep. No, no, nobody can tr- control your destiny but you. But a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people want to say, well, I'm the most talented person here in Bukata, Missouri, so-and-so, so-and-so. Okay, but if the people in Chicago, Atlanta, Hollywood don't know you, what does that mean? You're the most talented person in Bukata, Missouri, which is what? <laughs> you know? So a lot of people just don't get that, man. And, and it's amazing. I see, how many, I mean, I see how many people they get a couple of good compliments, and they just want to, be, you know, sit around. Oh, I, I can't, I can't do that. I gotta, I can't travel. I, I, I can't do that because I got, I got a job. No, okay, well, this is a job too. If you want to make money, it's a job. You gotta hustle. So it's gotta be part. Of, it's gotta be part of your makeup. It's, you know, the hustle has gotta be part of your makeup. That's all there is to it. Oh, I definitely agree, and they're always going to rely on those uh, social media, those likes, and all this other stuff involved. Mm-hmm. That's just that's just a small part of that. But it, bottom line is, you got to get you out there, and and as far as the social media stuff and all that, it's it's just you know self promoting and stuff. That's great, but that's just a part of it. But the the real 
the real truth is how can you get yourself out there that's really how you're going to do it. it's not through through the technology but how can you get you how can you share yourself to the public to the people that know you mm-hmm. well and it's funny it's funny that you bring it because you can see it because social media can open up a fan base for you this is true but here's the what, what, what some of these guys don't understand okay you got 5,000 Facebook friends okay you're on Twitter Instagram you got, you know, you're a good-looking female, and you always post pictures of you in a, you know, in a bathing suit. Okay, so you got 200,000 fans, male, you know, guys who like to look at your pictures and whatever else. But a real movie director, a real movie producer wants to see your work. They want to see your hustle. They want to know you are talented, not just a pretty face and a nice physique. Because that's, yeah, in L.A., Atlanta, Chicago, that's a dime a dozen. That's probably more than that. Probably a, a dime, a two, three dozen, actually. I mean, take me, for instance. Big, muscle-bound, bald-headed black guy. How many of those are in, are in L.A.? How many of those are in, are in Chicago? How many of those are every every form of football player? Whether it be college or pro, every former, you know, and, 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 and every former, every club bouncer, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, if that's the only thing you got to offer, you're not going to get that far in this business, you know. So you got to, if you just count on your social media and you're looking whatever else, you're not counting on showing people how how good of a worker you are. You're not showing people how dependable you are. You're not showing people how about how much of a hustler you are. And I don't just hustle for me; I hustle for them. You know, if I'm in your movie, everybody I've ever worked with will tell you, he hustles for the film. He hustles for the product. He hustles for, you know, for the production just as much. So, you know, if you're not willing to do that, you're not going to go too far. I totally agree, man. And when you're having to perform and having to be hired for numerous projects, and especially, let's say one, let's say you've been involved with a couple that may not always have the best quality, at least, let's say, atmosphere, maybe overall in general. Do you think this can actually uh, hinder motivation or despite of how well that you could perform or even the artist could perform in this film, do you think that could hinder on the motivation itself despite that? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no let, 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 let me tell you. I I come from the old school of wrestling that you walk into that dressing room. It may be the crappiest dressing room. The promoter has a bad reputation. The person they're going to put you in the ring with might be a little green, might not be the best guy. But you know what? You're there to perform for the people sitting in that crowd who bought tickets to see you. I have been, I, I have done wrestling matches where the ring didn't show up and they just laid out those little gym mats on the floor and we had to do, this, do the best we could there. And it's the same way with this. I have been in productions where the director has some type of reputation and he's fighting with some female actors or, or, or there, was, there was a lot of infighting going on. I've had to step up and, I've had to step up and stop fights. You know, keep people straight. But my job when I'm in front of that camera is to be the best Bishop Stevens can be so that when people buy this DVD or you click that channel on Netflix, that movie on Netflix or whatever, you're seeing the best of me you can. If I'm going to give excuses that, oh, man, these guys suck, and their production was this, and they're and they're short, and I, you know how I many times they're so unprofessional. Well, because they're unprofessional, means you got to be. Uh, I don't think that's how it works. You know, you get up and go to a job every day, and your boss is unprofessional. That means you got to be stupid. I, I don't think so. But no, I, I I do not. People, I hear that kind of stuff all the time. I'm like, look, I'm going to do a job. I'm going to do the best I can. This is what I was hired for. And if, while all you guys are whining and acting a fool, I'm going to be the guy walking across the stage to win the award. That's the way I see it. Oh, I totally agree, man. Go and plug in any websites or anything that we can definitely check out right now or anything that you'd like to add to that. Oh, man. Let's see. What's coming out soon? Let me see what we got. For those of you, I don't, I'm not sure when you're going to play this, but uh, in a couple of days, the wager 
dropped. Um, I star in that with Buster Douglas and Sean Harding, a former football player, Sean, uh, NFL football player, Sean Harper. Um, October 1st, the series, which I'm very excited about, The Dark. The Dark drops, and it is, now I'm really looking forward to this. I co star in that with Kevin Sizemore. It's, it's a mini series. Uh, I co star in that with Kevin Sizemore, my boy John Wells, and my boy Sylvia Wolf. So I'm looking forward to that dropping in, 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 in uh, that's October the 1st. Uh, Bloodthirst should be out sometime next year. Uh, I got to do a movie with Malcolm McDowell called Trick and Treats. And hopefully that'll be dropping next year. Uh, Lockdown with uh, Michael Paré and Bailene. Hopefully that'll be that. that should be co- so it's a lot of stuff coming out to be checking out. But if you really want to keep up with stuff, uh, check it out on bishopstevens.com. Um, you can always look me up on IMDb, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all that at Bishops or one. So yeah, I'm out there a little bit. <laughs> Well, there you have it, everybody. That is actor Bishop Stevens. Well, brother, I thank you for having me. It was fun. You asked a lot of good questions.